Let the Holy Spirit fill us. Let the words that we are about to receive from your word and from the sermon inspire us to worship you more, to praise you more, and to be an example to others. Let us be like Jesus, reaching out to the oppressed, the poor, the hurting. Let us not forgive them, forget them, Lord. May the words that we hear, inspired by your Holy Spirit, move us to do your work in this world and especially in our community, so the people will know that we are Christians by our love. In his most precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Let's, Let's continue in the same worship as we sing, As the Deer Panted for the Water.
We will continue now with the announcements for the month. Um, there's a lot of activities going on in the month of April. On April the 6th is the health fair. On the 7th, we're going to have the men's brunch. I don't know if Mr. Terrence would like to share something about that with us. So on the 14th, we have Palm Sunday. That's when we're going to have our Easter cantata. Holy Thursday will be the foot washing at 7. Then we have on the sunrise service on Easter Sunday at 8 a.m., which breakfast will be served. The Good Friday service, as you have in your bulletins, those of you who have them when you enter, they were given out at Grace United Methodist Church at St. Albans, New York. Um, and also the feeding at the end of the month. I believe the choir is in charge of the feeding this month in April. Yes or no? Okay, so we'll find out for sure. But those of you who um, prepare a di dish, kindly call Mr. Vega and Mr. Vega will happily go and pick up the dish. Thank you so much. Um, are there any visitors visiting us today? We would like to welcome you. If you're a visitor for the first time, please stand up and tell us your name, anyone? Please stand up and identify, tell us your name and where you're from. Hi, my name is Charles Bobo, I'm South Korea. Mm. And the first time we have the night for Well, welcome. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Anyone else who's visiting for the first time? Well, we welcome you. Uh, may the Lord bless you dearly, and may the words and the worship touch your heart in a very special way and you receive a special blessing today. Um, now we're going to have a woman's history moment. We have Julia who will come and share. Julia Good morning. I would like to begin this message by noting the great honor that I have in sharing this with you at this particular time, the last day of Women's History Month, on the heels of Black History Month, at the beginning of spring, and the year that our church will turn 100 years old. With all that in mind, it seems to me that the most obvious person I should speak about today is our very own Reverend Delois Davis. As I share this story, I acknowledge that I might be the least qualified person to speak about our pastor, as I am one of the newest members of this congregation. I am fully aware that virtually all of you know the pastor far better than I. <clears throat> as I share this with you, please reminisce in the times and stories that you have shared with her. In talking with Reverend Davis, I have learned about a woman that in, with her trust in God has pushed through barriers to be a church leader, she not only had to go to college as a non-traditional student, but also leave the church she grew up in. She had to work against prejudice of not only race, sex, and age, but also personal self-doubt. Delois Davis grew up in a farm near Earl, Arkansas in the 1950s. In preparing this, I took a moment to look to see where Earl, Arkansas was on Google Maps. This is a very small town. Nothing but farms for miles and miles and with a population now of only 2,000 people. Growing up, she and her 10 brothers and sisters had to fair share farm chores and there was little time to play. Sundays, however, was a time to go to church. Her mother insisted everyone go to church every Sunday, all day not just from 10 to 12. She, raised, she was raised Baptist and was saved when she was 13 years old. At that time, 
she didn't feel like there was much for her as a woman in the church. She graduated from high school in 1965. And I want to note here that by today's expectations, that might not seem like much, but Alabama's current high school graduation is 66%. A woman graduating in the segregated South in 1965 required determination. In the summer of 1965, Delois left her small town for New York City. Take a moment to imagine moving from a farm in Arkansas to the city of New York. Again, determination and breaking through barriers. That summer, she married her high school sweetheart, James Davis. They had two children, Lisa and Frank. She worked as a bookkeeper through the 70s, 80s, and 90s. In 1990, James Davis passed away, leaving her a widow with two teenage children. Although she worked and cared for her family, she kept hearing God call her to do more than just Bible study. She was confused. Why is God calling her? What did she have to offer? She was just a woman, and women didn't really have a place in the church. However, the more that she read the Bible, the more she came, became convinced that God did have a plan for her. In reading the story of Balaam's donkey, which is Numbers 22, 21 through 39, the story is where an angel uses a donkey to get Balaam to follow God's word. She began to think, if God can use a jackass, then certainly she can he can use a woman. The trouble was that the Baptist church didn't allow women to be pastors. Therefore, what more could she do? The door was open one day when a friend who was a Methodist asked her to help at her church. When she did, she found the Methodist women could be pastors. Although it seemed exciting to serve the Lord as a pastor, she was hesitant. You see, coming from a Baptist background, Methodists seemed dead and so quiet, not really involved in praise and worship. As you know, many Methodists tend to be quiet and reserved. Perhaps God was looking to add some spice to our Methodist service. She protested, but God wouldn't release her. It was while working at CBS television that she found she could no longer ignore God's calling. That required her to leave her job and go back to school. So she did. And although she felt as if she was following God's words, things didn't go easily. She was a student with classmates her children's age, working a part-time job to pay a mortgage. She felt as if she had, was getting mixed messages from God. Still, she preserved, persevered. In 2004, in her 30s, she graduated with a Bachelor's of Art in Religious Studies from the College of New Rochelle. She was first in her family to graduate from college. By this time, she was associate pastor at Grace United Methodist Church in Albanes, New York beginning in 2000 and serving for 10 years. Still, there was a drive for education. You see, Pastor Delois believed that in order to share the word of God, she had to be trained and understand the word of God to help others. She wanted to know more to be a pastor. She wanted to be an elder of the Methodist Church. The road to being an elder is challenging. There are courses and committees and as a woman of color, Delois felt especially, it especially challenging. She, directed, she was directed to work in circles of people that seemed to believe she didn't belong, people that didn't understand where she came from nor appreciate what she had to offer. She had to fight her own self-doubt. Yet, she felt God push her to keep going. She continued her education and received her Master's of Divinity, from New York Theological Seminary of New York in 2010. In 2014, she became an elder in full connection. I asked Pastor Delois, what would you tell young people who want to be a church leader? Her response was, leaders are made. If you hear the call of God, follow it. Distinguish it from those that may discourage you. It may take time. Stay steadfast on what you believe. Then I asked, what would you tell someone older, like you, when you started out 
leading the church. She said, you must know you are not going to be thrown out. God doesn't throw us away. Again, be steadfast, stand your ground. In January 2010, Pastor DeVoyce came to the Community United Methodist Church. Here, she fell in love with the people. The people became her family. She administered baptisms, weddings, and funerals, many of which you have been involved. So here we are today. Pastor Delois is 75 and still feels the call to lead. She, you're not? 71, sorry. Thank you, got it clear right away. All right, she still will always have to call the, to serve God's people. Although the season here, season is finished here, there is a new season on the horizon. She will not just be sitting in a rocking chair. In closing, some of the people we have heard about in, during Black History Month and Women's History Month, Pastor Delois's story is not over. God's plan is not only being revealed to her, but to us as well. My brothers and sisters, we all have to stay tuned. We have to listen and see what God brings to this change of seasons. Thank you. We all want to thank God for having Dolores Davis, Pastor Dolores Davis, and her blessings. Um, we now have Bibi. We continue with the woman's history um, moment. Bibi, Janik will come up and also share. Good morning, everyone. Uh, in observation of, well, I'm picking somebody from way back. In observation of Women's History Month, I chose someone who was born almost 200 years ago and almost forgotten. So I'm bringing her to memory today. But first of all, uh, let us recall that Jesus himself said, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, that nations will rise against nations. So in our lives today and in the past, we've seen that wars are inevitable and a part of life here in the world. It's the world order, I guess. But how many of us have pondered of its consequences? as we go about our daily lives and of the wounded after wars, the missing and the lost lives. Well, I would like to introduce to you today the memory of one remarkable, brave woman who took a very proactive approach in caring for the wounded in war and later founded the Association of the American Red Cross. Her name, Clara Barton, an educator, nurse, and humanitarian. Born on December 25, 1821, in Oxford, Massachusetts, she became a teacher and established the first free school in Bordentown New Jersey in 1852, but she resigned when she found out that the school had hired a man at twice her salary, imagine a school she founded, saying she would never work for less than a man. Now I know at this point all the men are saying, well, <laughs> forget her, but far be it as we continue to look at how her life played out. In 1854, she was hired at the U.S. Patent Office in Washington, D.C., with equal sal salary as her male colleagues. 
but later was given a lesser paying job as a copyist. I guess you copy stuff that the speakers were doing. I don't know. I didn't research who copyist is. But um, as a copyist, she, had, she made lesser salary. And she was demoted to that position by the secretary, the then secretary, Robert McClellan, a man who opposed women working in government. When the Civil War began in 1861, she quit that job and made it her mission to bring supplies to the Union soldiers and to care for the wounded. Indeed, she was on the front lines of the battlefield, and she once described how a bullet made a hole in the sleeve of her dress. That, those days, they were wearing the long dresses and the long sleeves as she was helping a wounded soldier off the battlefield. This started her lifelong career of aiding people in times of disaster and conflicts. She also helped to prepare slaves with Mr. Cage for their lives in freedom. And after the war, helped to locate missing soldiers and mark thousands of graves. While on a trip to Switzerland, she, later, she learned of the Red Cross, already established there in 1864. She later met with then President Hayes and with her support and lobbying, the, the American Association of the Red Cross was formed on May 21st, 1881. She was elected its president in 1882 and remained with the Red Cross until 1904, attending national and international events, aiding with disasters and helping the homeless. In 1904, she established the National First Aid Association of America. She died in 1912. Today, her home in Echo, Maryland, is a national historic site, the first so dedicated to the achievement of a woman. One of her famous quotes was, if I can't be a soldier, I will help soldiers. She was no man hater. She was for women, she was a feminist. In a time when women were not allowed in the army, sad to say, just five years after her death, the first woman was admitted in the US Army. Ladies and gentlemen, I, re I give you to um, recall Clara Barton as the founder of the American Association of the Red Cross. Thank you for listening. Okay, is Barry Atkin here? No. no? Okay. So we'll continue with the praise and worship. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me, and it is well with my soul.
my soul, we glorify you, Jesus, as when peace like a river, we glorify you, Lord, at all times. It is well, it is well with my soul, and we glorify him with all our hearts. Let our worship reach up the heavens. May he feel and hear every song that comes out of our mouth this morning, dear Jesus, and we glorify you. And with that same worship, we're going to have our Bible readings. Joshua chapter 5, 9 through 12 by Topeka Karani and Luke 15, 1 to 3 and 11b through 32 by Linda Abbas. Good morning. Good morning. Joshua chapter 5, uh, verses 9 through 12. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, I ask that you stand, if you're able, for the reading from Luke 15, verses 1 through 32. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons, The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in desolate living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you 
and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. These are the words for the people of God. It is time for giving. For giving. Proverbs 21:26 says, all day long he craves for more, but the righteous give without sparing. We'll be singing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Like a compassionate parent, 
You wait to receive us in your embrace while we struggle to place you first in our lives. Multiply these tithes and offerings so that they open the ears of your lost children to your message of unconditional love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We will now have ministry, ministry through music. The Community Methodist Church Choir will sing, and as soon as they complete their song, we will have a message from the Lord. We will be blessed by our sister in Christ, Myrna Lala, who will bring us the word. back again Hallelujah Praise the Lamb Hallelujah Praise the Lamb My heart sings They carried him with all our guilt and all our sin. The Lamb of God was slain for our transgressions. And on the cross, those near pierced hands reach up to God and down to man. And just such sin I never seen. He took me. In his arms, embracing me, he willingly forgave. Oh, mercy, grace, and love that knows no bound, no guilty and condemned. Forgiven for Christ, the Lord has risen and risen him. We shall one day be. 
all pray, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Lord. Praise the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, oh God, Lord, that you take over right now, oh God. Lord, I am nothing but a vessel in your sight. And Father God, I ask, oh God, Lord, that you reveal yourself unto yes. your people in a new and special way, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, Lord, that you will touch each and every woman, each and every man, each and every boy, and each and every girl. Father, I pray for a revival, a reunion, a reconstruction of the mind, body, soul, and spirit through your word, O oh God, Lord. O oh God, Lord, that you will remove every hard heart, O oh God. Give us a heart of flesh. Give us our ears to hear, O oh God, that hearing we may hear and seeing we may see. Make yourself manifest to us today, O oh God, and let your people praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I was asked to give the message today. I am not a qualified preacher, as you know, but God has called us all to be ambassadors and preachers for him, right? So um, the message today that he gave me, good morning to everyone. It is wonderful to be in the church of God as always. And I say a good morning to everyone. I asked God to give me a message, um, what should I talk about? And I know today is the last day of the Women's Month, um, the last week of the Women's Month, and I was supposed to say something about women, I thought. But God immediately gave me uh, this uh, message of living, in, the heading is living in a tumultuous world. And I said, but God, remember, I was reminding him, but it's Women's Month. I'm supposed to say something about the women. You know, let's change it a little bit. Put some women in there. And he says, no, 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 no. This is what I want you to do. I want you to talk about living in this tumultuous world. So I'm, I was obedient, and I said, okay, God, you speak. And so I looked up the meaning of tumultuous, and I found the meaning was um, tumultuous, stormy, turbulent, in turmoil, passionate, intense, explosive, violent, violate, full of upheavals, full of ups and downs, roller coaster, exciting, hectic, chaotic, confused, disorderly, unruly, rowdy, out of control, unrestrained, turbulent, boisterous, agitated, restless, hysterical, frenzied. Does this sound like the world we live in today? A lot, right? And some of our lives too. Um, when I listen to the news, I want to sing like Jim Reeves. Anybody know Jim Reeves? I want to sing. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the, beyond the blue. And that's what I want to say. I want to go away to that place. At first, I thought, why? Why did... Uh, God gave me that word. But when I looked at the news, I understood. I understood why God was giving me that message. There was turmoil everywhere. And I was not surprised that God wanted me to talk about how to live in a tumultuous world. We recently heard about the cyclone in Mozambique where thousands of bodies are floating. It was horrible. I don't even know what a cyclone is. Floods, we look, there's floods in every, a lot of states. Christians are being persecuted in Iraq, Iran, and other places. Like Bibi said, there's wars, there's rumors of wars. There's fighting everywhere. There's months and months of talk of collusion, and now the conclusion of no collusion, 
and exoneration. Aren't we tired of all of that? We are also witnessing the influx of thousands and thousands of immigrants who are fleeing their own countries for a better life. Freedom from oppression, freedom from hunger, freedom from poverty, socialism, dictatorship. Just look at our neighbors and our friends in Venezuela. Brings tears to my eyes because I lived in Venezuela for two years and it was a beautiful paradise. It was a prosperous nation and the people are all so beautiful and friendly and warm and loving and what's happening now bring, brings tears to my eyes. Am I here to give you bad news, to remind you of woes and wars and rumors? God forbid. I am here to tell you the good news that Jesus Christ lives. He lives yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus, the Son of God, Yeshua, the Messiah, the Hebrew name, he lives. He's the same God today, yesterday, and forever. And this message is not only for women, even though sometimes I think that women has more troubles than men, or then they, 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 they present themselves in that way because, you know, we women like to talk and share our stories. Men sometimes keep everything inside, but that's beside the point, right? So I believe this message is not only for women, but it's for the church today. God lives, and the word of God says, I am the resurrection, of, res resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That's John 11, verse uh, 25. Does this really mean dead in the sense of you have no more life? Well, in the context in, in, in John 11, when he told Martha that he is the resurrection and the life, in that context, yes, because he, ro he rose Lazarus from the dead. But it also means that even in our situation when things look hopeless, when we are filled with despair, when we don't know what to turn, where we don't know where to turn, and we don't know what tomorrow will bring, God is saying to us, but I will give you life. I am with you always until the end of the world. The situation is not hopeless. It may seem hopeless and you may feel helpless, but it is not hopeless. But you may want to say, Myrna, you don't know my situation. My situation is hopeless. I have lost my job. I have no money. I will become homeless. I cannot pay my bills. My marriage is on the rocks. I have no papers. My family and children have turned their backs on me. I feel deserted. I am in pain, chronic pain. I don't know where to do or where to turn. But we need to trust God. We need to know that God is here for us. He's the healer. He's our deliverer. He's our shepherd. He's our keeper. He's our healer. Jesus said in Mark 5, 36 to Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. He was the rule, one of the rulers of the synagogue. And Jesus had to say that to him. He's saying it to us, brothers and sisters, here today. He's saying, don't be afraid. Amen. Only believe. You may not know what tomorrow will bring. God has the map of your life into his hands. He is holding your hand. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So what do we need in times such as these uncertain, tumultuous times? Here are five things that we, I, I believe that we as believers need to live, to carry out in these tumultuous times. And the first one that I thought of was the word of God. We cannot survive without the word of God. 
I remember as a child growing up, there was a plaque hanging in my bedroom, and I don't know who hung it up, but it was there. And there was a little lighthouse. I think we won it in Sunday school for learning verses. But it says, um, be not afraid, only believe, Mark 5, 536. Uh, 536. And there was a little lighthouse and the waters, and that's what it says, be not afraid, only believe. And many, many times when I went to bed, that was the last thing I saw, and I memorized it. And I would say to myself as a child, I don't have to be afraid, because God says, don't be afraid. And that gave me strength. It is important to teach your children the word of God. It is important to tell them of your testimonies. It is important to tell each other of the life we lived and how God helped us. I thought that was a really nice um, uh, bio and a really good thing that um, Julia did by talking about pastor's life. A lot of us don't know how hard it was for her. I myself don't know, but God has revealed to me that she did not have a hard life. And it was really, really difficult. But out of the mire and the clay, he pulled her out and he said, it is not you that has chosen yourself, but I has cho have chosen you. And I have told that to her. And I really, truly believe that. And this is not the end. You know, God has better and be more beautiful and more, more powerful things to do with her, even at this time. You know, the word of God teaches us in Psalm 119, the entrance of thy word giveth life, light. I am a firm believer that it does not only gives light, but it gives us faith. It gives us courage. It gives us strength. It gives us direction, encouragement. And David again in Psalms 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The word is powerful. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. I remember when I first came to this country, I didn't have a lot of family and friends, no friends. And I remembered I lived all alone in a little room because I was living in doing um, babysitting work. And I remember I had no one to talk to at night when I went to bed. And I would get up very early in the morning and the only friend I had was my Bible. And I read that Bible through, through and through. And that was the only word I know. And did God reveal himself to me so many times. So many times he revealed himself to me. I knew before Terrence got here what kind of job he was getting because he showed me in a dream. Carl is not here, but the van that Carl drives, God showed, me, showed it to me. Before I got it and I told my husband, we're going to get a red van. I saw it in a dream. And God showed me so many things, but that only goes to show I had no friend but Jesus. And when you don't have a friend and you don't know what, who to talk to and what your life is going to be and where you're going to turn, God shows you. He confirms by his word. So trust him. Proverbs 7 verse 3 says, To bind the words upon your fingers, write them upon the tablet of your heart. Why? In tumultuous times, you can withstand the wiles of the devil. And what is the wiles of the devil? It is depression, hopelessness, faithfulness, and in the midst of trouble, you can walk on troubled water. The word of God anchors our souls when the worldly cares beat hard. It invigorates when we are weary, when we are lost and in our way and in a valley of decision, God gives us guidance. Sometimes he holds us up when we feel he's not there. And when you look back, all you see are footprints on the sand. Isn't that true? The second thing is we need to get, become 
members of the church. We need to find a place where we can belong, where we can say we have a pastor with a testimony, where we can learn, where we can receive, where we can hear the word worship and get a relationship with God. The word of God says, forsake not the assembling of the saints. Well, sometimes if you cannot come, you could hear the word. There's no excuse because you could hear. I came in early this morning and I, I saw my pastor listening to worship music from Times Square Church. You could listen to a message by Charles Stanley. But the word of God says, forsake not the assembling. So when you can, as often as you can, be in church. Have brothers and sisters who can fellowship with you, who can bear your burdens, who you, who you can call to. The word of God says we need to pray for one another, encourage and bless one another, and serve one another. The third thing to do is, in tumultuous times, is to talk to God. What is talking to God? It is praying. Yes, you're right. If you listen five minutes watching the news, or if you're on your Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or Snapchat, I don't know what that is, but I hear my kids talking about it, it can elevate your blood pressure, it can raise your anxieties, and make you very angry. So we have to find a way to get rid of the jitters. How do we do that? Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Do not be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Amen. So you know what? When I was in my little room reading, reading my... Uh, my Bible and had nobody to talk to. When I was tired of reading my Bible, I put my cassette, you know what a cassette is, right? Little kids won't know. But I would put my cassette on and I would just play music from WWDJ and, you know, and play it over and over and over until the tape burst. And I would sing and I would dance up and down. And if somebody was looking in, they would think I, I was crazy like King David because I was dancing and I felt all God's angels around me, surrounding me. I was not alone. I was with the army of God. And that's what we need to do. We need to hear and sing and praise God. And we need to talk to God. How can we possibly hear and see all the bad news and devastating headlines? We cannot. But we also cannot be like an ostrich with its heads in the, head in the sand. We need to pray. We need to keep on praying. And like the five wives virgins in Matthew 25 verses 1 to 13, who had their lamps with oil and their wicks trimmed, watching and waiting for the second return of Christ. Yes, my brothers and sisters, this is what we need to do because we are living in the last and closing days. That's why the time is so tumultuous. And believe me, he is coming. So we need to watch, we need to pray. Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 13 talks of perilous times. Read it when you go home and see if it's not the times we're living in. Psalms 32 says, God is our hiding place. He will protect us from trouble and surround us with deliverance. Number four, to live in turbulent times, we need to live godly lives. God calls us to live godly lives in Titus 1 and 2. To the young men and young women, to the old men and old women, a people dedicated to Yahweh, the God of Israel. Leviticus 26, verse 12, and Hebrews 8, 10 tells us what it is to live a godly life. What is it to live a godly life? It is no longer I who lives, live, but Christ that liveth in me. When somebody see you walking down the street, they should know at a glance that you are a child of God. 
Well, of course, if you, if you spill out filthy profanities from your mouth, will anybody say that is a child of God? I mean, sometimes you lose it and it comes out and you say, Lord, forgive me. Right? God only knows sometimes we're human and we're provoked to the edge. But we fall down, we get up again. And we try to live Christ's life, holy life. We can't be living Christ's life, holy life, if we come home in the morning and we're drunk. We were in the bar all night. Right? So we got to live Christ's life, holy life, and be holy as he is so people could learn our lives, watch our lives, and know that we are living proof of Jesus Christ. It is no longer I, but Christ that liveth in me. And listen, I want to tell you that living this life is in this rowdy culture and climate. It's not popular. Godliness is not popular or flashy. The Christian walk could be very lonely at times. Jesus himself was uh, devastated because all his disciples forsook him when he needed them. There was no one around. His beloved Peter denied him three times. So when you're living the Christ life, life it could be lonely. The friends you had, you wouldn't have them before, most possibly. So just know that. And the last thing I have on my list, how to live a tumultu in this tumultuous times, is we need to tell people of the good news. Our testimony is proof that he lives in us. He changed us and we are new creatures in him. The word of God says in Revelation 12, 11, they overcame the evil one by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. You know, I'm not a pastor by profession. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and now a therapist, a psychotherapist by profession. But first and foremost, and lastly, I am a child of God. Amen. I hear a lot of sad stories. A woman, 30, 20, 23 to 36 years old, came to my office and said, I want to tell you something. I realized, I came to the conclusion, nobody is happy in this world. And I looked at her, and I smiled. A sad thing, right? to just be starting your life and think, no, but you're never going to be happy. What do you have to offer people when they tell you their sad stories? Well, I have Jesus, and I could tell them the good news. Life may be tough, but you're not alone. You can endure if you keep on the straight and narrow path. God will bless you with life eternal. In this time to come, you will have happy times. If you, for, if you forsake things in this life, he will give more back unto you. Triple, double fold, this time and in the life to come. And just by your, your grace and your attitude and your Christ-like behavior, others will see Christ in you. So only Jesus is the answer. There is no other way. People need a spiritual heart transplant. Natural man is so deep in sin, there is no end to the capability of his deprived nature. They just keep on sinning and sinning and sinning. People cannot change themselves any more than a leopard can change their spots. Only God can transform us. He has called us to give good news to the poor, to set the captives free, to show joy, to give love, to give life, Give Jesus the hope of our salvation. Romans 1.16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of God, for it is a good news of salvation to all who believe. Yeah. Listen, we all go through tumultuous times. 
Moses and Joshua and the children of Israel had to go through the wilderness for 40, day, 40 years with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Who was that pillar of cloud? Jesus. Who was that pillar uh, at night? Jesus. Pillar of fire? Jesus. Who was the water in the rock? Jesus. Who was manna from in heaven? Jesus. He supplies for us water and food and a shelter and a refuge. And he's our strength. He's a comforter. He's a husband to the widow and a father to the fatherless. Have hope, brothers and sisters. Jesus is still alive. Amen. You know, the children of Israel stopped eating the food in, this, in the passage we read, and they had food from Canaan. God will deliver us. He will give us what he promises. He's a promise keeper. So to end my, my story today, or to end my message, I want to say remember, what was it, four? Four things? Five things? Five things. Remember those five things. And today, like the prodigal son, God welcomes us and wants to hug us, and he wants to tell us everything will be okay. Just believe. Just have faith. He is the same God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel. He is Yahweh, who came as Yeshua to bring us salvation, Jesus. He is the one who died on the cross and shed his blood for us. And by his stripes, we are healed. So believe it. Believe it. Like I said, you may not know what will happen tomorrow, but God will hold your hand. He will give you back what the canker worm has eaten. How do I know all this? Because if I didn't test it out, I wouldn't be here saying it. I tested each and everything out that I'm saying to you. My life is a living testimony that Jesus Christ lives today, yesterday, and forever. So today, like the prodigal son, come back home to Jesus if you've lost your way. Don't give up. Endure. Christ will bring you through. And trust me, keep watching, keep praying, keep asking, and keep seeking. God will bring you through. Amen. May God bless you today. Amen. We would like to thank Bernard for that beautiful, beautiful message, and it was very had a lot of fruit in it, and it has a lot of uh, uh, information for us as we live in this tumultuous world. We know that things are happening now that have never happened in our lifetime. But God has made us some promises. And in order for us to know the promises and what they are, we have to get in the Word of God. And as we get in the Word of God, God will show us the way and God will do exactly what Murder said God will do. And we have to test him for ourselves. Try me and see. And see, God is saying to us, try me and see and see if I can be whatever you need and whatever you think I should be. So at this time, I'm going to ask anyone who does not have a relationship with Christ, who have not tried him for themselves. I'm going to ask that you come forward or you slip up your hand and I'll pray for you, we'll pray for you and believe God that God is going to move in your life. Whatever you're going through right now, you don't have to go through it all by yourself. Why? Because God says, the word of God lets us know that I will never leave you nor will I forsake you. Amen. So as the musicians play, God is a miracle worker, a way maker. He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness. That's who he is. That's who God is. If you need a way man, God will make a way out of nowhere. God will make a way in the desert where there is no water, where it's totally dry. And it might be dry in your life right now.
your light 
For the Bible lets us know that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Father God, we bless you on today. God, we thank you for your word, God, for your word is our light. We thank you, Lord God, for those that have come, oh God. God, and if there's any need in the house, Lord God, we ask now in the name of Jesus that you would intervene, oh God, that you would touch every heart and every mind, oh God, that you would save those that are unsaved, God. God, that you would reveal yourself to those who might not have known you, God, before now. Lord God, they've heard your word before, oh God. God, I ask that you cultivate each heart, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, as long as you are with us, God, we can endure all things. For you promise us, God, that we are not more than conquerors. We are not just conquerors, but we are more than conquerors. God, we are not victims, but we are victors, oh God. So God, we thank you right now. Lord God, no one has come forth. The word has gone forth. But God, you know each heart. The heart that's sitting there saying, God, I want to know you. But God, I can't move from my seat right now. So God, I'm asking now in the name of Jesus, that God, that you would touch that heart right now. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the messenger, God, and the message that was presented to us, oh God. Ah, God, help us to receive in the name of Jesus. Bless our visitors, God, and our, all those that have come to be with us on today. Lord, we thank you and we give you glory and we give you praise. For God, you are wonderful in our sight. We ask all this in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. And the people of God says, Amen.